The bilby is a burrowing marsupial. It's a member of the bandicoot family and it lives underground in these burrows that it digs that can be quite extensive. It lives down there during the day and at night it comes out to feed. Bilbies are omnivores, which means that they eat a whole range of different food from grubs and grass seeds to insects and eggs and even geckos. A lot of their food is actually found under the top layer of the soil. So they dig little holes to try and access the underground uh, tubers and fungi and, and grubs. And as they do that, they're creating sort of little, little cups around the landscape that then trap seeds and water and they can help plants germinate. Their burrows are actually also homes for plenty of other species for shelter and as their permanent homes. And as bilbies dig these burrows and these little scrapings for food, it actually creates this nutrient cycle, which is super important, particularly in the desert. And because of all these ecosystem functions that the bilby has, they're what's known as an ecosystem engineer. The bilby has disappeared from at least 80% of the area in Australia that it once used to live. So it's only known from about 20% of those former locations. And this is because of a number of threats like predation by introduced feral cats and foxes, competition with introduced stock animals and rabbits, habitat damage from animals such as feral camels, horses, cattle and donkeys, and also changed fire regimes where larger and hotter fires remove big areas of food resources and cover from predators. In the Northern Territory, Central Land Council, ranger groups, traditional owners and other countrymen and women have been spending a lot of time over many years looking for the bilby and working hard to protect it by using good fire and getting rid of feral animals from bilby habitat. So in this project that TNRM are facilitating, through funding from the Australian Government's National Land Care Program, we're working with all these ranger groups across about 1.8 million hectares to help protect the bilby in its habitat. While we have a really good idea of how many bilbies live behind predator-proof fences and conservation reserves, we don't really have a good understanding of how many bilbies there are in the wild, particularly in the Northern Territory. So one bilby can use up to about 10 burrows and it can dig a lot of diggings every night depending on the type of food it's digging for and how much of it there is around. And so when we see bilby sign, we don't know if it's from one bilby or 10 bilbies. Because they're usually asleep in their burrows during the day, and the daytime is usually when we're out looking for them, uh, we won't see the bilbies themselves, so we look for signs of them. Now, when bilbies dig their burrows and have their little diggings, the soil that comes out is often a different color than the surrounding soil, and so it actually makes it quite easy to find them, also from the air. So what we've been doing, is flying along in helicopters, quite low and quite slow, and we're looking down with an experienced observer looking on each side of the helicopter, and we're looking for signs of bilby. So we're looking for piles of dirt that might be from a burrow or little holes that you can see. So because in the desert, the uh, plants are quite sparse, you can actually see really well down on top of the vegetation. And so when we find something that looks like it might be from a bilby, we get the helicopter to hover, and then we turn around when we confirm it's bilby and we get on the ground. And then we start walking around and we're looking for signs that indicate uh, whether it's fresh or whether it's older. And we're looking for tracks of the bilby and we're looking for guna, so bilby poo. And what we're doing is we're recording every little bit of information that we find. We're taking photos, we're recording the location of where those burrows and diggings are. And what we're also doing is collecting bilby poo. So every time we collect a little bit of bilby poo, we give it its own unique identification number, we record it, and then that gets stored in a really particular way to stop it from getting damp and mouldy, and it gets transported back to the lab. Bilby poo, or guna, contains DNA. DNA is a unique code that's found in all living things, including bilbies, humans, animals and plants. We get parts of our DNA from our parents, which gives us our unique traits. So things like our eye colour and hair colour. Just like people, each bilby has its own unique DNA code, which is different from all of the other bilbies, but more similar to its close family members. By studying DNA found in bilby guna, we can tell how many bilbies are in an area, which family they belong to, and how closely related they are to other bilbies in nearby places. 
Extracting DNA from bilby guna involves several steps in the lab. First, we prepare the guna by washing it with a special liquid that helps loosen the material around the outside, which holds the DNA. Then, we break down the cells in the guna using a special enzyme that creates a chemical reaction and by incubating it or warming it up. Once the DNA is released, we attach it to a membrane made of silica by spinning it really quickly in a machine called a centrifuge. After that, we wash the DNA to remove unwanted substances like salts and enzymes from the guna. Once the DNA is clean, we dissolve it into a solution using another liquid, and then we store it in the freezer until we're ready to study it further. After we extract the DNA from the bilby guna, we send it away to a special lab with special equipment for genotyping. Genotyping means studying the differences and the similarities in the DNA codes found in different bilby individuals. By studying the DNA found in bilby guna, we can better understand how many are there and also assess their health. It can also tell us about how connected the bilby populations are and whether or not there's much genetic variation. So if bilbies are traveling long distances to go and mate with individuals from other family groups, it means that their children are gonna be healthier and able to survive longer because they've got more genetic diversity. This research will help us identify groups of bilbies that might require a little bit more help and a little bit more management to ensure their health and survival into the future. This project has been a fantastic collaboration. We've worked with six ranger groups, dozens of traditional owners, and plenty of other countrymen and women on these amazing camps on people's country, looking for bilbies, looking for threats, recording all the information, and we share the data back with Central Land Council to help people make decisions about what they can do to protect the bilby on their country.